Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now today we're going to be looking at Azure and in particular at how we go about dealing with ASP.NET Core coding errors and also access restrictions. Come the end of this video you should be a bit more familiar with how you deal with ASP.NET Core coding errors and also how to basically lock down an API to a particular IP address. Now this continues our series where we're basically going ahead and creating a Blazor WebAssembly with an API and a SQL Server database into Azure. Now for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. Now let's go ahead and look in Azure, and first of all, we're going to have a look at how we go about dealing with ASP.NET Core coding errors. So now we want to see how we go about dealing with ASP.NET Core errors, in particular 500 errors. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm basically going to go ahead and delete the connection string from the API to actually force it to get an error. So we can do that, we go into settings, configuration, and we go and delete our connection string. Go ahead and save those changes. Okay, so that's updated. So this actual index page should work absolutely fine, as you can see. Well, it's just loading at the moment, but that should work fine because it's just a static HTML page, as you can see now. But we're basically going to test out one of the API methods to see if it's actually going to work or not. I suspect it's probably going to throw a 500 error, but let's have a look. So let's try it out. Set an ID of 1. So as you can see there, we've got the 500 internal server error. So how do we go about dealing with that? Maybe it will show us a friendly error if we run the URL directly. Let's give that a go. So if we copy that into our browser, create a new tab for it. So as you can see, it's thrown a 500 error, but it's very much a friendly error. We don't exactly know what the issue is. So how do we go about dealing with that in Azure? Well, the best way of doing it, the best way I could find anyways, is if we go down to monitoring and we go to app service logs. So what we need to do is we need to turn on these login features here. So we can go ahead and do that. First of all, we also need to install the ASP.NET Core site extension to enable application login. So we're going to do that first. So while it's going ahead and doing that, we'll turn all these other ones on. Like so. And whilst that's installing, we're just going to wait for that to install the actual ASP.NET Core site extension. Then we can go ahead and commit to the changes. As you can see, it's been installed now. So all being well, we just need to make sure that we've set everything, which is good. Now we can go ahead and save it. And that's all done. So what we can do after this is we can go into the log stream and select application logs. So just let it connect to the actual application. So you can see that's now connected. Now we're going to test out the API again. So we're still going to get a 500 error, friendly error on here, but hopefully the app service logs will tell us a bit more about what issue we're actually having with it. So we're just going to go ahead and let that do it. So as you can see, we've got the 500 error again in our browser. Let's go back to our log stream and see what we can see. Is there anything related to date? Yes, here we go. So a network related or instance specific error connection occurred whilst establishing a connection to SQL Server. It's basically telling us we can't connect to the SQL Server. So that's one way of going about with errors. The other way is if we go up to development tools and advanced tools and we click on go, this is basically going to load up our, a particular sort of debugging tool, which is just about to do, called Kudu Services. So in here, it gives us a couple of things that we can sort of have a look at, sort of how many processes are being run at a particular point, you know, what deployments have been made, what files are on the server. And what we can also do is we can go to Tools and Diagnostic Dump. We can basically save that and it will basically save a dump of all the log files. So that's gone ahead and done that. So this is the uh, zip file here, just bringing it up for you. 
So in here, we've got a couple of folders in here. To actually access the actual files, what we can do is we can go into uh, log files, application and diagnostics. So if I bring that over to you, you can see here we've got a SQL Server exception. So that's another way of dealing with Azure ASP.NET Core 500 errors. Now, the last thing I want to do is obviously with the API, we're exposing it to the whole world at the moment. And that just isn't for security things, you know, it, it's not very good. So how do we go about sort of locking it down in Azure? So we can go ahead and if we go into settings and networking, if I can find it. Yes. So here it is. So down here, we've got access restrictions. So if we're going to click into that. What we can do in here is we can basically add an exception. So if I put my IP address in here, so it'll be a case that I'll be able to see the API, but no one else in the world, apart from the local Azure services, will be able to see it. So I'm going to put my IP address in, like so, and then we're going to add that as a rule. Okay, so my IP address has been added in there. So basically, I'm allowed to see it, but everyone else is denied actual access to see it. So we can go ahead and test that. So I'm going to give this another test to make sure that the API, yeah, I can access it. And then I'm going to use this Is It Down website to just, just see if it can actually access it or not. So, you know, it's just saying that it's down. So it basically can't see it. I'm the only one, my, my server is the only one that can actually see it, my environment, my network environment. So just to prove that is the case, what we'll do is we'll now go ahead and remove that. So once again, it will be exposed to the whole world. And if we run it again in this website, just to prove that that is actually the case. It's been working. Yeah, so we've removed that particular restriction and now it's basically saying but the API can be seen globally. So I'll be interested to know how you go about dealing with ASP.NET Core errors in Azure. If you've got any comments about it, please let me know and get in contact with me. So that now concludes our Dev to Azure series. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.